Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come before you this morning, Father, and we just thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity, Lord, to just worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, while we live in a time in this world that is just chaotic and falling apart, we know that the gates of heaven are still firm and peaceful and ready, Lord. Father, we just lift this service up before you. And Father God, just as your grace has no boundary, help us, Lord, to have no boundary on our worship and praise for you this morning. So, Father, we pray right now that you would uh, just uplift every person in this room today, Father. Touch those who are, are ill. Touch those, Lord, who are just seeking your grace. And, Father God, we just love you and praise you. And, Lord, we just have your will and your way in this place. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. Higher than my side, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you, who you love, I'll love, how you serve, I'll serve, if this life I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah. Light unto the world, light unto my life, I will live. Give the Lord some praise.
Shake hands, hug next, tell people, you glad to see them in the house of the Lord. And hi, everybody. Glad you're with us today here at the Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're located at 411 Blue Ridge Street, right here in the heart of beautiful Lynchburg, Virginia. Just one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the main entrance of Lynchburg College. I sure hope that you can come out and experience the great things that God's doing here. And I want to draw your attention to one particular day coming up at the end of this month. July the 26th. It's Family and Friends Sunday. Hey, this guy right here is my friend, and he's going to be in church that Sunday, aren't you, son? And you're going to bring some people with you, aren't you? Huh? I said, aren't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're looking forward to it. I want you to be my friend and come and be a part of this great celebration. We're going to have an awesome worship service starting at 10, 11 o'clock, and uh, of course, a great time in Bible study at 10 o'clock, but 11 o'clock is the main worship hour. And then after that, we're going to have a big cookout and great food and fellowship. Come and be a part. That's the last Sunday in this month, July the 26th, here at the Gethsemane Baptist Church. I know your heart will be mightily blessed of the Lord. May I also remind you that we're going to be preaching today a message. I'm glad today the Word of God says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Folks, we're living today in a lot of deception in this world. We're living in a day of difficulty. We're living in a day seemingly as sin and morals have gone. And I'm glad to tell you today, the truth of God still prevails and it can turn all things around. Stay tuned for the message today. Thank God at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart, it rolled away. I'm glad the burden of the hearts of this nation can roll away today at the cross and God can do a mighty work. God bless you today and thank you again for tuning in to the In the Garden program, also to Alive TV and I pray your heart is greatly blessed. Hey Brad, come on. Hey, you guys turn around, look at that camera. You know what, Family and Friends Sunday is coming. It's coming, it's coming the 26th and we're gonna bring them in here, aren't we? God's we're gonna God's load them up. up. Amen, are y'all, wait a minute, I'm not through yet. Are y'all happy? happy? Look at that camera and tell them. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can be happy too. Come on over to the church where the shout has not gone out. Bless you today. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he fought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love.
his people. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. You can be seated. There is not a mother, sister, friend, or brother loves the way that Jesus can. He proved his love for me when he died on Calvary. He gave his life for fallen man. His love is a manless love and it reaches down. If you wear the name, I'm in the book of John, in just one verse this morning, in John 8 and 32, the word of God says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Truth and freedom are actually closely connected, if you look at it. When you forsake the truth, you lose your freedom. And we see a lot of things that's happening within the ranks and the confines of our beloved nation today. And it seems like that our freedoms are eroding and we're losing grip as a nation. We are rapidly losing our freedom. And the reason is we will not accept the truth. We will not embrace the truth. We will not live the truth. We will not let the truth have permanence and preeminence in our life. And as the body of Christ, this is hard to say this morning. And I'm not just speaking to that church. I'm speaking as the body of Christ, the church, the whole church. As the body of Christ, I ask this question. Are we part of the problem? 
You know, we, we look at what's going on in our world and the morals and, and the degradation of sin and the shame and, and, and things just keep happening that we just stand in awe with our mouth gaped open and our knee, uh, uh, chin down to our kneecaps and we just cannot believe what we have come to and where we're going as a nation. But honestly, are we part of the problem? Last Sunday I preached the truth in you. And unfortunately, the society and the culture does not take the church serious any longer. The church is no longer considered a voice. It's amazing how all the other voices that raise up and, uh, and, and protest and everything else that's going on within our nation and even across the world, how that every year is attentive to that, but the voice of the Christian no longer has any permanence or any importance has no value. And folks, you know, we, we have lost as the church our influence in society. We really have. We have to come to the grips of where we are before we can ever get to the place that God wants us to be. And so in that generation, every type of behavior today is being considered today a protected environment. Uh, today, if you speak the truth, then all of a sudden now you are offensive. If you call yourself a Bible-believing Christian, and, and let's just get definitive here for a moment today. A Bible-believing Christian today is a person who believes that the Word of God is true. Amen. We believe in the inerrancy and infallibility of the Word of God. I believe every word in this Bible. I believe even the, the words that are written on the spine of this Bible that says, Holy Bible. I believe in the author of this Bible. I believe in the great way that God provided a way that we had no way and no salvation and that God would love us so much in all of our evil and all of our sin and all of our shame and He would send down His Son, Jesus Christ, to become our sin who knew no sin. Oh, this is an amazing thing what God has done. And thank God this morning that he loved us in such a way. Greater love hath no man than this, and a man lay down his life for his friends. Oh, listen, friend, today, it, it, it's open season today on Bible-believing Christians. And if you don't believe that, go home and watch the news tonight. And I promise you, it won't take you but five minutes of watching the news to see the condition today of where we are. Folks, we are in a deplorable condition. We're in a sad situation. We're in a place today that we're in a place of almost near panic as a nation. And so, if you declare through your standards of living today the principles of morals and of God's Word, I hate to say it, but now you're ridiculed because of your stand for the biblical principles. Well, we're not backing up. Amen. We're not today going to sit down and shut up or crawl under a pew and lock our doors and hide. We're still going to continue to be a voice in the wilderness. We're still going to proclaim the message of this word that is the message of truth. For the truth does not today bind you up. The truth sets you free. Amen. Praise the Lord. So today, if, if you stand for these principles of the morals today that are contained in the pages of God's word, then today you're ridiculed. But in turn today, if you violate vehemently today God's word and you seek even to change your gender, which you can't do, they place your picture on a magazine and have you on every talk show on television today and you have then declared a national hero. Well, I want to just say right now and emphatically clear, that is not my hero. Amen. And I don't condone it, and today it makes me literally sick to my stomach. Amen. 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 Well, if you thought that was bad, I just heard last Friday, and this is a documented fact because I check out everything that I give you before I give it to you. But in the state of Oregon, which is honestly the last state I would ever want to live in, in our union, amen. The state of Oregon has approved that 15-year-old minors can have sex change operations without parental consent, and the state will assist in the cost of doing it. That is a documented fact, and they're not the only state. Well, my God. 
if they'll legalize you to use marijuana and smoke dope and everything else, what's the difference? I mean, how far can you go with this thing? Just how low can you get in your sin? I mean, really, how low can your morals go? I mean, today, the blessings of God are beyond comprehension. But also today, the degradation and the sin and the shame that is in our nation today is also beyond comprehension. This is the world that we're living in. And today, we come to the fact we have lost our influence in the world. We really, literally have today. Have, have we lost what Jesus said concerning ye are the light of the world? Jesus told us to let our light so shine before men that they'll see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven, and we're not doing it. We're not proclaiming the message that Jesus still saves. Amen. Sunday morning church becomes now in America a social hour today that seeks not to offend sinners because the pastor has to calculate every word that he says that it does not offend people. Folks, if you're not, listen, if, pre if preaching today does not offend you and does not stir you and does not convict you, something's wrong with the preaching. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad today that through the, and God said through the foolishness of preaching today. Thank God even today in, in stammering tongues and trying to proclaim the message of God's word, it can find a place in a heart that will change today a person's life and change today their eternity and birth them into the glorious family of God. Folks, listen today. The church is a place today where we can become sanctified, redeemed, and anointed, and where we can become spirit-filled of the Lord. Hallelujah! Amen. We can't blame today the Supreme Court today for taking down the Ten Commandments out of our schools and out of our public places when today we won't live by them as born-again Christians. What do we expect? You can't have a double standard. You can't say they should be this and you're doing the opposite. You've got to live your convictions. Did you hear that? You've got to live your convictions. And today I am convicted by the power of this Word called the Word of God that I will live a separated, dedicated, sanctified, spirit-filled life today that has the anointing of God upon it today. We're letting today our Supreme Court judges today choose what basically preachers don't have the boldness to stand in the pulpits and preach against. We have the commission when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Folks, today, we are the very voice of God. In a generation today of sinners and vipers and, and those today who are consumed with sin and all oh, the shame and the shackles and they are enslaved today by the power of Satan. The world needs to hear today and the world needs to hear about the Lord through us. Just not in the proclamation of someone, me, standing in this pulpit and shaking this book in your face today. But we've got to get out there in the highways and the hedges today and compel people to come into the house of the Lord that they can hear the message of this book that will transform their life. Amen. We've got to get back to the basic principles of what God has prescribed. Here is the prescription. Here is the blueprint. Here's everything that is needed in our life. If we will take that and invest that, God will mightily use us and God will mightily bless us. Amen. He will. But it's of no value if we do not use it. We, we ought to be a demonstration today of who He is. We ought to stand on the rock of His gospel today. And we ought today to be the pillar of truth in this world in which we're living. And David said beautifully in Psalm 11, he said, If the foundation be destroyed, then what can the righteous do? You cannot define the church based on today someone's experience or based upon today someone's, well... You know, I had this experience. It's not based on your experience. It's not based today upon tradition. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it's not based today on culture. Well, culture says, well, what happened to what God said? Amen. Amen. The church today is not defined by people. The church is defined by the Word of God. The Word of God is the standard of truth. And today Jesus declares in John 17, 17, He said, Thy Word, this Word, is truth. 
This truth liberates. This truth sets free. This truth lifts up. This truth blesses. This truth saves. Hallelujah. This truth sanctifies. This truth today will deliver you into the hands of the blessings of God. Amen. Hallelujah for the truth. The truth of God is greater than your experiences. The truth of God is greater than your traditions. And the truth of God is greater today than our cultures. It, 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 it is not based upon today what you think about church, but it's based upon the biblical definition of what the church is. And so the truth of God's Word is not actually a, in, in our nation, we're living in division. You know what the truth of this Word does? It unifies. Hallelujah. The truth of God's Word, it builds bridges today. And today, where society is building walls, God's Word builds bridges. We've had more walls built in the last few months in our nation than we can imagine. Folks, I don't know if whether you realize it or not, and it's not just blamed upon one person today, it's blamed upon today the whole nation. We are rapidly becoming a socialistic nation. We are on the very threshold and got two feet and we're about to drag the rest of us into that door. Does that alarm you? Does that concern you? It does me. But thanks be unto God, I still have a voice. And I still have a vote. And I still have a God who's with me. And I've got a God who's blessed this nation. And I want to see God bless America again. But before God will bless America, God has got to bless the church. And we've got to get back to the Lord. Putting Him first and foremost in our hearts and our lives. Understand what God said about the church. He said, except the Lord build the house. The house is the church. They labor in vain that build it. Psalm 127 and 1. Now the one who directs the church is God Himself. And so he is the cornerstone. He is what we know as the foundation. And Christ is the head of the church. And so Colossians 1 and 18 states this. Christ is, not was, is the head of the church. Therefore, Christ being the head of the church, then today we should be declaring whose word? His word. Amen. His death is what we should be declaring. The victory of the cross is what we should be proclaiming. And the victory of the resurrection today should be what we're celebrating. Amen. I didn't come in here this morning defeated. I've come in here to celebrate. I've come in here to rejoice. I've come in here to shout hallelujah. Because my God went to a death. He went to a cross. He died my death. He went to a tomb. He came out. He arose victorious. He ascended into heaven. He's seated at the Father's right hand. And glory to God, He's coming again. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Get ready. He's coming. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. See, his death should be declared today. In his name, that's what we should be lifting up. It is his name that should be magnified. It is his name that today we should be adoring. It, in so many churches today, his name is not even spoken. In so many churches today, and this really makes me sick, his word is not preached. I turned on television this morning. I'm going to be honest with you. Some of these main big churches, this is terrible to say, but I won't say it. I wouldn't waste my time going. I can sleep just as good in my bed as I can in a pew. As a matter of fact, better. Because I listened to one nationally known television preacher today, and I thought... Here it is, you're talking about things that, man, you should be electrified and empowered by, and you should be shouting. You've got great crowds there, and it is so passive and so laid back, and it's like he's talking so low that he's just going to make people strain their ears to hear. Let me tell you what, God gave you a voice, proclaimed this message. If Jesus is coming, then praise God, be excited about the one. When you're not excited about the one who's coming, how in the world you expect anybody else to be excited about him? Preachers are not preaching the word. 
You say, you shouldn't be so hard on them. You, you won yourself. You're right, but let me tell you what. I use this. This is, my, this is my microscope that I have to take and look into my life with and see what I need to work on and improve and how I need to refine my life to be usable for His glory. And I'm under scrutiny every day by the power of this book and by the hand of God that my life is right, pleasing, and honoring to Him. Amen. And folks, today, we better start taking serious this thing. If you're not going to preach it, then bless God, get out of the pulpit. And go get a job or go retire or do whatever you're going to do. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, reprove exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Not only that, in so many churches today, the cross is not proclaimed. They're proclaiming everything but the way of the cross. They're telling people how they think, think you can get there. And they're telling you how you can get everything else in your life just all smoothed out. You can't get nothing smoothed out in your life if you don't have the Lord in your life. They, they, in so many churches today, the opportunity for salvation is never presented because, you know what, unfortunately, the guy standing behind the pulpit doesn't even know the God he's preaching about. Amen. If Jesus Christ had not come down and intruded today on this earth by carrying our cross today and dying our death and bearing our stripes today and going to our tomb and rising again on the third day, let me tell you what, we would not have redemption if he had not done that. We have a message. Bless God, let's proclaim it, amen. Thank God the Father sent the Son to interfere in our lives. I don't want my life interfered with. I, I just want to get by. I just want to do the best I can. I just want, you know, this, that, and the other. Let me tell you what. It's not what you want. It's what God wants for you. Because everything that you want is a lesser way where God has a greater way. Amen. Amen. We need to, his ways in our lives. Hallelujah. If you attend a place of worship today that does not, and let me tell you what you do here. But for those who are listening today and watching by television, if you attend a place that does not preach, today Jesus and does not today deliver the word and does not offer salvation then all you are attending today is just an empty place that offers an empty hope God holds me responsible for what I tell you and what I preach and I'm not going to preach you my flesh because that won't do you no good but I will preach you this because this is life changing. See, it's at the cross. We had a little video clip here at the beginning of the service about the cross. And I thought how applicable today for what Paul said in Galatians 6 and 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is not an outdated message today. It's a place today of victory, not defeat. Amen. The cross is a place today of celebration. The cross is a place of freedom. The cross today is a place where bondage is broken. The cross is a place today where liberty is declared. Hallelujah. The place of the cross is a place where the blessings of God flow to his, God, God's people. The cross is a place where your lo yoke is lifted and the chains and the, that had you ensnared are broken. Amen. The cross is a place where your sins are forgiven. And the cross is a place today where your burdens are lifted. Amen. Because of the cross, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Because of the cross, I'm no longer a victim. But praise God, I'm a victor. Amen. I'm so sick of everybody. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. You know what you are? You're just seeking for self-pity. Bless God. Look to Jesus and live. Stop living in self-pity and start living in the victory that God's given you. Amen. Hallelujah. But you don't know what I've been through. You don't know how I was treated. You don't know how I grew up. Does it really matter? Is that where you want to live? Is it in the past that's not going to do anything but keep you in bondage? Or do you want to live in the victory that right now is the power and the presence and the anointing of God in your life? Amen. I have no past to go back to. Because all my past has been forgiven and blotted out as just if, as if I never lived it. Amen. Because of the cross, I, I can declare 
that if God then be for me, who can be against me? See, the church is built by God and is submitted today to the Lord Jesus Christ. The church declares his word and it practices his commandments or today his precepts in his word. The word of God is our code of conduct. Amen. I spent 12 years on active duty and some of you, men and women, both were in the military. You had a code of conduct, if you would, that you had to go by. If you violated that, you paid the price, didn't you? We have even a greater code of conduct today, and this is not just one of correction. This is one of blessing. Amen. And so today Jesus says, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and you do not what I say? We profess, well, I love Jesus. Well, it's not what you say. It's how you live it. Amen. If you love him, let me just put this real simple for you. If you love him, then obey him. If he says, don't forsake my house, don't forsake his house. If he says, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing. If he says, give and it shall be given unto you, then do it. Amen. Amen. The church should be the foundation upon which our society is built. It was, it's no longer. The reason our society is falling apart is because today the church is not declaring the truth. Amen. We need to reestablish the foundation of the truth of God's Word. Let me say that again. We need to reestablish the truth of God's Word. We need the Word back in the church. We need the Word back in our homes. We need the Word back in our lives. We need the Word to be the focal point of our lives. Amen. We earn the wages of sin, which is death, by our rebellion against God. But Jesus died a substitutionary death in our benefit. He paid the debt in full. I had a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. And the price Satan had placed on your soul, Jesus paid it in full. In full, amen. Satan is a slave master. And, and, and in our condition, our lost condition, he owned us. And he directed our paths and he had us in his snare. But you know, one day the king of glory came by and thank God he stepped down and he stepped into that slave market and thank God he paid the debt in full by the shedding of his blood. Amen. He purchased your redemption and he purchased your soul and he will save you and write your name in heaven and he'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. He'll put a spring in your step. He'll put a joy in your heart. He'll put peace in your soul and you'll know beyond a shadow of doubt you're a child of the king amen, amen. praise god amen. hallelujah i didn't come to this church this morning guessing and hoping maybe just maybe i'll get there man i know in whom i have believed and am persuaded he is able to keep that which i've committed unto him against that day amen 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 amen, amen. 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 He made the royal purchase by shedding his blood. And this is what's so crazy about this. Not only did he make the royal purpose, but now he's made us royal priests and kings of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Here we are. We're somebody. Hey, Randy, guess what? We're somebody going somewhere. Isn't that cool? Amen. You're somebody going somewhere, Brad. Amen. You are a child of the king. Glory. Hey, Gary, you're a child of the king, brother. Amen. Amen. Hey, John, you're a child of the king. Drew, you're a child of the king. My Lord, Tom Williamson, he's a child of the king. Look at that Tyrone Austin sitting back there. He's a child of the king. Amen. Somebody shouted glory. How about us, preacher? Y'all are too. You too, Helen. Amen. Aren't you glad? I mean, really, aren't you glad? Amen. Look at Lewis Lee sitting there. Looking at sitting there like a big shot. Amen. Well, he is. He's a child of the king. Look at that little guy. He used to be an Englishman. Now he's an American. Sitting back there. He's a child of the king. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> he looked at everyone who was hung up, strung up, and tied up in sin. And he went to the cross, and he was hung up on the cross for our hang-ups. Amen. And thank God, because he offers forgiveness, we now have peace, joy, and hope. He saw us as we were, but thank God he didn't leave us like we were. 
He touched our lives with his stripes and declared with his stripes we're healed. We're sinners. Let me tell you what. We were all sinners. We all needed a Savior. Hallelujah. The price has been paid. And thank God because he loves us, we have eternal life with him. The question is not, does God love us? The question is, do we love God enough to quit our sinning? Mm. If you love him, you obey him. We're not to tolerate our sins. We are to forsake our sins and turn from our sins. Hear this. This is awesome. I want you to hear this. Listen, I'm going to read it slow because I don't want you to miss it. Do you have the scripture for screen? Acts 3. Oh, yeah, good. Look at this. Let's read it together because, man, you got to get this in your spirit. Here we go. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Y'all not ready. I said, are you ready? Amen. Okay, here we go. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God, we are in a need for a time of refreshing in our nation, in our communities, in this world. Oh, we need a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. We need for Him just to come down and just get all over us, amen, and stir us up. And thank God we can get our sins forgiven and we can get in a right relationship. And the time of refreshing is found in the presence of the Lord. But if you're like a Jonah and you're running from His presence, you'll never have it. We're living in a generation that has itching ears. They only want to hear, but they don't want to change their living. We, we could win the world for Christ if we'd stop being ashamed of the, of the gospel. Paul said in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And again today, we could change the world if we were not ashamed of him. Now, there are three things, and I'm almost through, so just give me a couple more minutes. There are three things needed for the church today. Here they are. One, we need each other. You need the folks on this side, and the folks on this side, and the folks in the middle. The Bible says a house divided will not stand. Our church is, is, is a place where people can come. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what your nationality is. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care where you've been, what you've done. I'm glad these doors are open for whosoever will come in and wants to worship and praise God. Hallelujah. You're welcome here. Amen. 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 That church today is a blood-bought church that's been redeemed by the grace of God for we need each other. Amen. I need you, but even greater God needs you. And we're to work together in the power of God. And when we work together, it explodes the power of God in the church. Our time is short. And folks, we've got to unite our hearts in the love of God and proclaim this message of Jesus Christ. We must get over ourselves and over our selfishness today. And we've got to get today this addiction and break it to ourselves. And we've got to put Jesus first and foremost in our lives today. Amen. Well, we're living in a selfie generation, aren't we? Honestly, we really are. Some of you get on Facebook and you try to look like a duck. Why have you got to pooch your lips out and look like a duck when you're not a duck and you think you can quack and you can't? The church is not Burger King. This is not where you have it your way. Well, I kind of like, you know, Cynthia doesn't like this commercial, but I kind of like it. That dude for Arby's, we have the meats. Thank God we've got the meat of God's word. Amen. That will change you and build you up and transform you into the people that God wants you to be. We have the meat. Amen. <laughs> we also need to endure. Jesus said, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Thank God. So <laughs> Some of you are going to be mad at me, but you know what? We're tired of looking at your po pooched out lips. Get your lips back in your mouth where they belong. Amen. <laughs> 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 Amen. 
we need to endure. Preacher, you don't look at it on Facebook, do you? Well, you look at it, so why can't I look at it? I'd rather see a nice smile on your face than to see your lips all pooched out like somebody made you mad. I wish he'd get off of that. Okay. All you had to do was ask. Some of the disciples endured hardship, pain, ridicule, and even death. Jesus said, endure. And you know what? You'll never lose your blessing if you never give up. Amen. We don't like struggle. We just like the path of success. We want a gospel that comes without struggle. You're not going to get it. Paul told Timothy, he said, endure hardness as a good soldier. Endure, for weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Endure with confidence, for greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. Endure the struggles because God is able today to conquer every enemy that you face and to restore today everything in your life that Satan has taken away from you and to give you peace in the times of storm and to heal your body and to deliver you. And he is the one that is mighty to save today, for he will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. And I like Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivereth him out of them all. Amen. And the third truth, and I'm through, is we need to rejoice. Tom sung a song this morning in Sunday school. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. We need to worship, and we need to worship with the right attitude. You, you may not understand all that God does, but you know what? It's not really important that you understand. You just need to give him the praise for he is worthy of our praise today. Amen. God is not interested today in your comfort. He's interested in conforming you to the character that he wants to work in your life. And I close again with these words. If you were the name, but I'm going to add one thing to it, then live it. You're the sheep of his pasture. Live, in, live like it. You're his child. You're the royalty of God. Live the royalty of God in your life. Put him first and serve him today. This is the message for the church. The question is, will we take the message or will we walk away, away from it? Will we let God be God or will we choose the ways of the world? Father, we look to you in this season of praise. We do endure and we do rejoice and we do need each other. We do, Lord. We need each other. Help us now, right now, stand to our feet. And whatever the need that may exist in our hearts and our lives, and maybe it's a need of salvation, can I just stop the prayer a moment and ask you this one important question? Are you saved today? Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? I'm not going to embarrass you, but I want to pray for you today. Carlton, I don't know that I'm going to heaven when I die. Well, the Bible says, it's appointed unto man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. Do you know that you're saved? If not, I'm going to ask you to do a very simple thing. All you got to do is raise your hand so I can remember you in my own personal prayer life right now. If you don't know you're saved, would you slip your hand up right now? Anyone? 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 Thank you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear God in heaven, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Forgive me of my sins, for your word says you will, and I believe that. Come into my heart and my life and save me, for your word says that you will do that. For whosoever shall call, upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. I give you my heart, my life. Take me and use me. If you just prayed that prayer a moment ago, I want to ask you one more time. You said that you're a sinner in need of salvation. Now, if you just ask him into your heart and your life, would you slip your hand up as a testimony to that this morning that you ask the Lord, thank you. Anyone else today? Carlton, I ask Jesus into my life. 
Now, what needs do you have, Father, as the music starts? And Lord, as we can come to these altars of prayer, we can cast our cares upon you. I'm glad today you will lift us up. Lord, today, whatever need may be in our lives, whatever struggle, whatever trial, Lord, today, you can move if we will simply come. Will you come right now? The Spirit is drawing and pulling and wooing you right now. Listen to Him. Come. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Come and receive what God has for you. Come and let God be God. 